Hey everyone, welcome to episode 18, I believe, of Inside Track. This is my weekly music education stream, or sometimes I post a video that premieres at this time on Friday. And every week I pick a topic and spend about an hour or so going through it. So before we get started on today's topic, there is content for you to download for free if you're watching this now or later. There's a link in the description box below for a, a Dropbox folder and inside there you'll find a PDF for notation of today's topic as well as a standard MIDI file that those of you that can't read music can open up inside of a sequencer and you can look at the piano roll and follow along with what I'm doing today. So and then one last thing before we get started is that uh, if you like this video, thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe. And to be notified, ring that bell. Leave any comments or questions below, or if you're watching this live now, leave it in the chat box and I'll certainly answer it. Hey, Mark, good to see you. And also, uh, I don't have a Patreon or a channel membership. My channel is just simply not big enough for any of that stuff. But I do have links for my Amazon and iTunes stores where I've got over a dozen albums out in various styles of instrumental music. And you could certainly help support the channel by purchasing a single. And as I've said in past videos, if everyone that watched my videos purchased a single, I'd be doing really well in terms of breaking even making these videos. But anyway, I just appreciate anybody watching and that's great also. So whatever you can do, that would be greatly appreciated. So without any further ado, let's get on today's topic. So the last video I made, I talked about expanding your harmonic vocabulary by learning your triads and different ways that you can combine triads with different notes to create more advanced and more rich and interesting sounding harmonies. So the next step for you to take in this journey, and there are going to be a few more videos on this subject. As a matter of fact, the next few videos I've decided are all going to be about harmonic language, is to work on your seventh chords. And let's go take a look at the screen here. So what are seventh chords? Well, seventh chords are, from my description and from my um, the way of thinking about them are four note chords where you're stacking thirds. And if we take a look here at our first line, we've got C, up a third to E, up a minor third to G, and up a major third to B. So that first chord is a C major, what we would call a C major seventh, right? Uh, okay, so I made a mistake here. There should be a flat on this note, a B flat. So if we look at the next one, it will be C, a major third up to E, a minor third to G, a minor third to B flat, and that would be what we would call a C dominant seventh chord. And then the next one, C, E flat, G, B flat, that would be a C minor chord. <clears throat> and then the very next one, C, G, E flat, G flat, and B double flat, or as is commonly written, a natural. I wrote it this way because that's theoretically correct, but it's in common usage you would write an A natural. That would be a C diminished seventh chord. So there's three ways that you can think about seventh chords. One is that you could just learn the seventh chords in the abstract. The next one is you can learn what are called secondary seventh chords. And this is the next two, the secondary seventh chords and the next one are what I would call functional seventh chords in that they have a function inside of music. So if we look at this second line here, we've got a C major scale in the bottom note. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. And let's, let's do this so you can see the keyboard as well. Right, so we've got a C major scale. And I've built a seventh chord by stacking thirds above that on each scale tone. So it would give us a C, uh, uh, on the first scale tone, a C major seventh chord, on the second scale tone, a D minor seventh chord, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, 
A minor seven, and then something a little bit different, which is a B half diminished seventh and C major seventh. Okay, so that would be functional seventh chords, the first one being secondary sevenths. And that and the next one, secondary dominance, are going to be the topic of the next video I do. So secondary dominance would be right here. And let me just play this little chord progression. So I've got C, uh, C major, A7, D7, G7, C. So let me play that again without talking. So we start off here with our C major chord. And then the next chord is an A7 chord. Now, three of these notes are in the key of C. The A, the G, and the E. But the C sharp is not. I've made that, I've changed that note there to a C sharp to make that, in, in the key of C, that would be a C natural. But I've made it a C sharp because that A7 chord is what would be considered a dominant or a five chord of the two chord in the key of C. So in other words, if we look up here, right, the two chord in the key of C is a D minor chord. Something that would be a five chord of that D minor chord would be an A7 chord because it's a fifth away. So we've got right here a five of the two chord, but instead of going to the two chord in the key, I go to D7 which is a five chord of the five chord, which is G in the key of C, and then resolving. Now that's a little bit confusing, and I'll get into more, more detail with that as I do that particular lesson. But basically, they're dominant chord, seventh chords. So, so in other words, a, a triad with a, a, a dominant seventh, and they move in a certain way, and that's an example of that. So we'll get into that functional harmony next on the next video. But for today, we're going to talk about strategies for using and creating chord progressions with the five basic seventh chords. Five. Let's see. One, two, three, four, right. Five. Okay. So, and we're going to work on them mostly in close position. And I'll talk about that shortly. So we've done some of these before, right? So this right here on this line here, we've got a major seventh, a dominant seventh, a minor seventh, a half diminished seventh, and a diminished seventh. And so from any particular note, I've got right here a key for how you would construct any of these chords. So a ma let me zoom in on that a little. So a major seventh chord from bottom to top in root position, we're not talking about inversions yet, and in close position, a C major, like a major seventh, you go up. Uh, let's see, let's do this. You go up from C, you go up a major third. From that E, you go up a minor third. And from that note, you go up a major third. And any note that will create a major seventh chord. So if I say, let's start on G, I go up a major third to B, a minor third to D, and then another major third to G, that makes a... G major seventh chord. And I'm assuming that all of you know your intervals and how to construct intervals with this. Uh, that's I could go over that, but I, that you can find an, anywhere online. So, and also this is like, I'm starting from scratch and I've got a whole pl lesson planned here that will lead into the next two lessons. So that's why I'm starting from scratch. Some of you probably already know all this. A dominant seventh chord, which is this guy here. We have a major third, a minor third, and another minor third. And then a minor seventh chord, which is this guy right here, and this guy up here. A minor third, a major third, and a minor third. And again, from any note. So if I go from F sharp, A is a minor third, a major third is C sharp, and a minor third is E. So that makes a minor seventh chord. A half diminished seventh. That's called a half diminished seventh because the the bottom three notes create a diminished triad, but the seventh isn't diminished, right? It's not doubly flatted. It's just a regular dominant seventh chord above that. So the formula for that is you go up a minor third, you go up another minor third, and then you go up a major third. 
All right. So it's interesting because, well, let me just show you a diminished. So that uh, that's from any pitch. So if I start on G, a minor third, a minor third, and a major third, that would give me a half diminished seventh. And that is the seven chord in mo any major key. So this is the seven chord of A flat. We'll get into that when we do functional harmony. And then the last one over here and here is a diminished seventh chord, and that's all minor thirds. So C, up a minor third, up a minor third, and up a minor third, right? So the difference between a diminished seventh chord and a half diminished seventh chord is you've got a minor third, and then another minor third, and then a half diminished seventh, a minor third, and then a major third. So those are our five basic seventh chords. And it's really, a, there are other five note chords, structure, four notes, st chord structures. Uh, and again, they are typically used as what we would call upper structures. And I talked about other three note chords being incomplete seventh chords in the last video. I will get into all that stuff in a future video because that's really some juicy sounds you could make. But for right now, we're just starting at the bottom and working our way up. So we've got our major seventh chords, our, our seven chord, seventh chords, our five different kinds of seventh chords. So what do you do? You have to learn these things, right? So the only way that I know how to learn these things is to actually practice them and to figure out all different kinds of ways to practice them, coming up with little games where you're drilling them into your hands. Because even if you're not a keyboard player, right, you sh and you, but you want to be a composer or any instrumentalist, you should know your five seventh chords in every key, in every inversion. It's as simple as that. It's a great foundation for, cr for growing and learning and being able to create harmonically sophisticated sounds. You know, it builds upon the triads, the sevenths, and then five note structures, six note structures, seven note structures. You have to sort of learn these things in a kind of progression, you know, that's, and I'm still learning them. I'm still working on them. So there's a few ways that you can do this and you can come up with your own ways of doing this, right? So what I'm going to do right here is just go back to the keyboard view and we'll just go through these. So our first one here at measure 21 is all inversions for each chord. So if I take this first chord here, which is C major seventh, right? To invert that, I simply take the bottom note and make it an octave higher. And the same thing here to invert this chord, take the bottom note and dr jump it up an octave. Same here. So to learn my C major, my C major seventh chords, in all inversions, get a metronome going at a nice, comfortable pace, 60 beats per minute, 40, even slower than that. And if you have to do 60 beats per minute, it's too fast, make it that there's two clicks for each one of these things. You should practice them always with, an, with a metronome going. And this is one way to learn them. So you just go through each inversion. Dot, root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, root, third, second, first and then go up to the jump up a fourth to the key of F and just transpose it to all 12 keys B flat you want accuracy you don't want speed Right, you can just go through the entire, all 12 keys, no problem. Right, etc. Then you would do the same thing with your dominant seventh chords. Etc. And then your ha your minor seventh chords, now 
It's always good to do as many things as possible in one exercise to make it interesting, f more interesting for you, and also to have multiple goal. Excuse me, wow, multiple goals, right? <laughs> so, what I could do when I'm practicing these these things is I could make the lowest note be the loudest note, and so you would practice that many ways. But one way you could do it is. And then you can really hear that, right? Or you could make your thumb be the loudest note. And you can just practice hitting that note on its own and letting the chord. Or you could have the, the third of the, the second note from the bottom be the loudest. What you're doing here is you're here you're training your ears as well as your hands to be able to hear all the different chord tones as they move through that exercise right that's really important way to practice this but you first have to get your hands to be able to play it and not just in one hand all in both hands separately right so the next one is you know half diminished same thing All 12 keys. You know, I do this still every day, right? I spend about 15, 20 minutes drilling chord voicings that I don't know in each hand separately like this. So I'm not telling you to do something I don't do. And then the last one is the diminished seventh chords, right? So that's one way to practice that. Now, you can do alternatives to internalize this stuff where you're taking the material and you're also adding some more technical facility for you to get it, drill it into your hands. So the, for example, the first one. Right, uh, let's say if I want to do that in G flat. Whoops. Do that while you're not, while you're, do that well when you're not live streaming. But anyway, that's one thing you can do. You could do a broken arpeggio. Right, that's another idea. Another one is you can reverse, right? You can play around with the rhythm. One, two, one, two, two. And you can really you could do so you could play games with it doesn't have to always be all the notes struck together you know and the more kinds of things that you could do stuff like I'm just taking the, the, the first voice and the alto voice and the bass voice and then the tenor and the soprano and just Right? Anything you can do to learn those things, get them in your hands, learn what the notes all sound like, get that into your ears, all that stuff will be incredibly helpful. So once you've done that, and what I would suggest is that, again, if you want to do this stuff, I've made this suggestion several times before, right? 20 minutes a day, four or five times a week. Targeted practice, right? So let's say for a week, you want to learn your major seventh chords in all inversions in all 12 keys, 
no problem. So you just practice it slowly, slowly, slowly. And all like C major is not that difficult. That's easy. But once you start getting into lots of combinations of black and white notes, it gets a little trickier. So you may want to practice those extra. So that you make what is the most difficult for you to do as strong as that things that are easy for you to do. So you spend a little extra time on those. So maybe you spend like three or four days, and at the end of the fourth day, you're pretty good with those. You move on to your dominant seventh chords. And then you do that for a few days, and then you spend a couple of days doing your major seventh and dominant seventh chords, alternating back and forth. So you might spend a month, and, it, and then you'll get all five chords down, and then you might sp then you just leave it, and you might move on to, to like another way of working on these, right? You've worked on those, and then you want to go on to another way of working on these. And I'll show you that in a second. And then once you've spent maybe a month doing that, then you go back and you start breaking things up into some of those broken arpeggios and rhythmic figures and maybe uh, emphasizing certain notes of the chord, right? So once you get the basic thing down where you can get through it without making any mistakes and you can concentrate and you know where everything is and how to play everything in each hand, right? Then you go back and you can start playing around with different patterns and uh, changing the rhythm and emphasizing different notes. Now, but before you get to that, what I would say to try is what I've got on the next page here. Let's go. Then what you do, this is really tricky and this is really difficult. So I would take, really be careful with the, these. So you would take each position each one of the four four close positions, and you just play going up in fourths. Just do the circle of fifths. Oh, this is enharmonically spelled badly right here. I thought I fixed that. Anyway, that's a B major seventh chord. Sorry about that, but I think you'll get the idea. Then your first inversion. Next inversion. These aren't so bad, right? And then. Like, you, you know, it's, it's, that's not something I just did overnight. I've spent, I've spent many years working on this stuff. Okay. So when you do that for all the different, all the different voicings. So in other words, if you're half diminished, right? Oh, wait, where am I? Here? Okay. Right, that gets a little tricky, but you just have to practice it slowly. And even if you have to go... Right? You break it down into little chunks. And, you, you know, so in other words, you, you see what I did there. I took that big, long thing of all 12 of those chords, and I just practiced the first two. Then I practiced the second to the third. Then I did the first three. Then I went from the third to the fourth. And once I got that down, I would probably go from the first all the way through the fourth. So you break it down into smaller little chunks that you can na easily navigate. You practice those little chunks over and over again till you get them drilled into your hands so that the amount of time between you think of the idea and are able to execute it is reduced as much as possible. You don't want to... There's nothing... For me, all this stuff leads up to being able to improvise. And if I have to think what a chord is, I'm not in the moment anymore and I'm not really being able to improvise that well anymore because I'm out of it. And you don't, like if you're going to run a marathon, when I, when I ran the New York City Marathon in 1996, it was an amazing event. I started 
practice practicing for the marathon. In, in, it's in November. I started pra- I, and I was running fairly regularly, but I started practicing for the marathon in end of February. So, right, and and that led me up. I did all sorts of different things to be to build up to being able to run. 26 miles and whatever it is, 380 yards or however far it is. Uh, that just didn't happen overnight. That took a lot of detailed work and effort, you know, 20 mile training runs, runs where I'm practicing interval sprints, all sorts of stuff like that. It's the same thing here. You know, you got to practice all these things and make them into bite sized chunks that you can assimilate while you're first learning. Okay. And then put strings of those chunks together. We're getting to some fun stuff shortly, I promise. Now, this one's not so bad, this next one, right? So this would be uh, popping up chromatically all of the different chord progressions. Right, just in root position. And this one's a really good candidate And even broken. Right, so and then, you know, same thing. First inversion, so just all five chords. So, you know, I'm talking here like this is a several month project, right? But by the end of it, you will have learned so much and you'll have gotten so much better. And then once you start, you got this together to a certain degree, you'll want to stop practicing by rote for a little while and start putting these into progressions. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So right here at measure 101, right? We've got a a close voiced a, a closed voiced progression. What I mean by that is that there's no space between any of the chord tones. They're all one right after the other. And I'll, I'll I'll show you on the next example what I mean a little bit more detailed. So if I take a chord progression like this. So let's break that down. So we've got C major in first inversion, and then I'm just going up to an F major seventh, but I'm just moving the top two voices down a step. And that gives me an F major seventh in second inversion. Then I take my bottom two notes and move them down a step. And now I've got a B half diminished seventh. So, so far I'm all in the key of C, right? One, four, seven, but I'm doing it stepwise. Right, well, and then now I start to add some chromatic tones, right? I just keep these the same and I just move this one down a half step to that B diminished seventh. And then I move everything down because the B diminished seventh, the reason I can do that is because, and this is, I'll get into this later on in the lesson today. If I add a fifth note to that chord, if I add an E, that becomes, I take this note, put it here. I've got E, G sharp, B, D, and F. So I've got an E7 chord with what's called a flatted ninth. So this is sort of like an incomplete seventh chord, this B diminished chord, which is a five of the next chord coming up, the A minor seventh. So that's why I can do that. Let's, and I will explain that in more detail in about 10 or 15 minutes. But let's continue on with this. So going back to measure 101. A minor, and then just stepwise. 
And then now, instead of going down chromatically with the top note, I go down chromatically with the bottom note. And again, right, that, that works because Because all of, like I could, if I wanted to add an additional note, and again, I'm going to get into this in more detail later today and also in future lessons. If on all of these right here, I wanted to add a fifth note, I would add a G, and then we get... Then, see, and see how that all works? So you're implying different harmonies with this voice leading. So that's a D, D half diminished seventh in second inversion, and then G major seventh over C major seventh over G, and then again doing what we did at the beginning, except these two chords here, except in a different inversion. So in other words, these three chords here, actually these four chords here, starting here, are the same as these four first four chords, but they're in different inversion. And then B half diminished seventh over F, and then this is just another inversion of this chord here, is this here. And then back to our root chord. So you can create all these really beautiful chord progressions. So Barat, I sometimes, um, thank you for the question and thanks for watching. So I change my fingering depending upon the, the position of the chords and how it stretches, how it fits my hand. So you really want to make sure that the stuff fits your hand properly and that's different for every person. So you really have to make sure that you're not overstretching and being really tense when you play. So in other words, when I play a chord, I try to like relax my hand into it. I'm not like this and then hitting the chord, right? Tense, you're gonna create all sorts of problems physically. So always stay relaxed. And if you're doing this stuff and you're feeling any tension or any pain, stop and just do a keyboard close up. Yeah, so sure, let's do this. Let's do a full screen keyboard, all right? How's that, Starlight? Good, so. Right, so in other words, if I'm playing this chord here, right, I'm just sort of, my hand is there. And you see how I, when I play the key, my hands slide along the keys a little bit, a tiny bit, and they open up just a little bit. But you don't see me going like this, where, see how tense that is? And hitting the, hitting the keys. Right, I'm just nice and relaxed. And I'm just sort of getting my hands on top of here and then just letting the weight of my arm push the keys down. And the same with doing stuff like right um, and also when I'm, I'm, I'm not going like this and my arm being locked in oh like you can't really see that let's see let me change the camera angle just a little bit like my arm is not really locked in like this it's See how my arm's a little open and see how my, my arm is moving? It's almost like I'm taking a piece of string and it's attached to my elbow and it's pulling my arm along and my fingers are just sort of dropping over the notes. Right? And, and some things it's easier than others. All right, but you just gotta practice slowly and be aware that you're not getting tense. That's the most important thing. All right, let's get back to here. Now, if we look at this group right here, this is the same chord progression as this. I've changed the spacing of some of the top notes, but what I've done is I've taken the root note of each chord and I've dropped it down an octave. So, in other words, our C major seventh chord, this is our root note of that chord and I'm dropping it down an octave. Let me, uh, let me just show you here on this keyboard. So if, in other words, this is my C major seventh chord, I'm taking the root note and I'm dropping it down an octave, and then I just did a different inversion. 
because I like the way this sounded better. All right, with the other three notes. So remember, I don't know if any of you, how many of you watched the uh, triad one, but remember when I said that, right, you have your triad on top and a fourth note on the bottom? That's very similar right here. So I've got an E minor triad with a C in the bass, which is a, basically a C major seventh chord. Okay, so let's go back to this and let me play this example up here, which is the same as this here, but spaced out with our root note an octave lower. Oh, that last chord is wrong. It should be a C major seventh. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so I'll play the two of them back to back. This one here and this one here. I could make that. So the first one, close voiced. And then the second one with the root note. So what I would suggest you do once you get fluent with these things is keep a diary and try to make three or four chord progressions. Three progressions of four chords in a progression, right? So, um, for example, and, and you would do it first in root position and then try to figure out the smoothest way to move those notes around. So let's say if I was in the key of D. Right, I could go D. I don't even have to be in a key. I could do. Right, those four chords sound really nice together. So D major seventh, up a minor third to F major seventh, down a whole step to E flat, then down a minor third to E C minor. So if I wanted to do that by step, Right? See that? How different ways of doing it? So just, you know, keep a diary. Just practice, come up with short, small progressions. And I am gonna do a video on creating chord progressions. There's all different ways to do it. But it all starts with getting your five, your five um, different seventh chords in your hands. All right, so now the next thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to demonstrate it here on the big keyboard and then move over to notation, is that, uh, remember on the last video, I last week's, inter, um, or two weeks ago, I guess it was, the, uh, the, the stream, I sh talked about um, inner doing these shell voicings in the left hand, which were two notes. So... We can also have three note shells for seventh chords. And they would be things like this. Right? So I'm going to play two notes on my left hand and then another one here. So if this is a C major seventh chord, I'm playing C and B, which is the seventh, and E, which is the third. I'm not playing the fifth. The fifth is not really that necessary all the time. And, I, and then if I wanted to do a C7 chord... Right? And then a C minor seventh, and then a C diminished seventh. And you can do all sorts of cool stuff with that. So let me show you what I mean. Oh, there's also doing shells like this in close position. So let's get back to the sheet music, and we can see here I've got some three note shell chord patterns right here. Right? And you could. So I'm just doing circle of fifths, right? I'm doing from C7, F7, B flat 7, E flat 7, A flat 7, then G7, and C major 7th. And then just do a little melodic pattern in the top. And so in other words, if I were to look at this top one and not play these, there's a little melody there. Right? So if I were to just play the downbeat of each, or the beats one and beat three, I would get. And 
and then I'm just doing a little a little f f melodic pattern to get from this note to this note. Right? And then you want to practice these things in as many different keys as you can get them into. For all these things. You make a three three chord progression, learn it in all the keys, as many as you can. And I will go over that again in a future video. But I'm trying to show you different ways right here where we can just start getting these sounds. So again, I've got them written down here, your open and closed shell chord voicings right here. Right on this line here. And there's a lot you can do with these, right? So let me just go here and I'll just do... Uh, not there, right there is better. And I'll place, I'm just going to improvise some stuff using shells in my left hand, uh, a, a, a fourth, a third note in my right hand, and then a melody up in the upper part of my right hand. So, uh, okay. Right, so you can do a lot of work with that technique, you know, and that's actually a good way to learn songs. So in other words, if I was going to play... Um, all the things you are, you could, as you're learning the song, you can harmonize the whole song like there. Yeah, that's true, Starlight Sun. I agree. So I act, that's actually a great exercise is to learn how to play the song All the Things You Are just using those shell notes, shell voicings. And you're going through all different keys with that. So that's a great tune to learn. But let's move forward here and let's talk about taking this stuff to the next level. Now, just like when we were doing triads, right? We had triads and we added a fourth note to create all different cool chords. What you can do here is you can take your seventh chords and add a fifth note. So at measure 117, which is the top line here, I've got C, E, G, and B, which is my C major seventh. And if I add an A in the bottom, I've got an A minor ninth chord. Right? If I look at the next one, I've got a dominant seventh chord. If I add an A flat, I've got an A flat major ninth with a sharp fifth. If I make that a C minor chord in the right hand and to add the A flat. I've got an A flat major nine. And if I make the half diminished chord, I've got an A flat nine. And then if I make my diminished seventh chord, and again, this is not an harmonically correct spelling of this, but it's easier to read, I think. That would be an A flat seven flat nine. So... And that's just one, ex a few examples of what you can do with a different uh, bottom note. So here, let's take a look at a few five note chord progressions. Oh, Chloe voiced. Whoops, should say close voiced. I need a proofreader. <laughs> All right. So if we look at our first one here, right? We've got C major seventh. We've got C half diminished seventh. And we've got B minor seventh. Okay, and this type of stuff is really foundational for j jazz harmony, but it can be used in many different kinds of examples. So if I add bass notes to that, I have an... Right, so I've got an A minor ninth, D7 
flat nine and flat 13. So let me switch screens so you can see that. So D, right, I've got these two notes in there. So that's D, C, and F sharp. So that gives us our D7. I've got an E flat, which is our flat nine, and a B flat on top, which is either a raised fifth or a flat 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? So A minor, which is C major seventh over A. D7 flat nine, flat 13, which is C half diminished seventh over D. And then B minor, B, D, F sharp, and A over G for our G major ninth. Now, when I'm doing these things, I don't think that, right? I just f have my chord voicings down. And I just play them. And it, But it takes time to get to that point. I can sit there and analyze them, but I think that that gets really pedantic and boring for a lot of people. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So we've got B flat right here, a little bit more further. So we've got right. So let's analyze that. So the first chord is a D minor seventh. The second chord is a G minor seventh in second inversion. So that's D, F, G, and B flat. Then the next one is an F major seventh in second inversion. So C, E, F, and A. And the next one is a B half diminished chord. B, D, F, and A. And then the next one, I'm just doing the right hand, is an E flat major seventh chord in second inversion. B flat, D, E flat, and G. Then the next one is an A diminished seventh chord, A, C, E flat, and F sharp. And then a D minor seventh chord in second inversion, A, C, D, and B flat. And now I'll play it just the right hand. See that? How nice that sounds? And let's add the left hand. So this basically gives us gives us a B flat major chord, E flat major, D minor, G7, C minor, F7, B flat major 7th. But to get technically perfect on this, it's a B flat with a major ninth. E flat with a major ninth, D minor seventh with a ninth, G nine, C minor ninth, F seven flat nine, and B flat major ninth. So what you're seeing here is that if I take these top chords here, okay, so it's a D minor, and the next one if you just look at the four notes, is a G minor, the next one is an F major, the next one is a B half diminished. If I just played them in root position, right? What I'm telling you is that if you add a note that's a third below them, you will get a ninth chord. So this D minor chord, when I add the B flat, I get the B flat major ninth. I've got a G minor chord. If I add the E flat, I've got an E flat major ninth. But I'm doing it in an inversion. And now this is a C, an F major seventh chord, this one here, right? If I, it's in this inversion. If I added F major, go down a third to D, I've got a D minor ninth. This is a B diminished, half diminished seventh chord, B, D, F, and A. If I go down a third, I've got a G9. So on this example, I'm playing a root note that's a third lower than the, the root position of all these chords, right? Even though I've got these chords in inversion, 
whatever that chord name is, I'm going a third lower than the root of that chord. And I'm adding that bass note in, and the result is that you get a, a ninth chord of some sort. All right. So let's take a look at this next one here. So I've just got this pedal point on this G, right? I've got these passing chords. So that's D minor, uh, D diminished seventh, F major seventh in uh, second inversion, B diminished seventh, and then E minor. Which makes that last chord a C major ninth. our last example I believe yes right here so with this one I'm doing something a little bit a little bit different in a few spots so let's play this for a second one more time Again, triads. B, D flat major seventh, B flat minor seventh, C sharp half diminished seventh, C half diminished seventh. This is um, F half diminished seventh, B flat minor, G flat major seventh, uh, B major or C flat major seventh, and then that's B flat minor seventh. But when you add the bass note, so I've got a B flat minor ninth, and I've got like sort of like a minor eleventh chord, A nine, A flat minor nine, D flat nine, G flat major seventh, G flat major seventh over B, and then a B major seventh over C sharp, or C flat major seventh over D flat to G flat major seventh. So you could see how with this technique you can start to create some really juicy chord progressions. And it's really um, essential that you learn your four note seven, your five different four note uh, seventh chords, these basic ones. As I said earlier, there are many, there are a bunch more. For example, there are chords that look like this, C, E, F sharp, and B, and they look like this, you know, or like this, right? I will get to those, but I'm making it so that somebody can take a look at like six or seven videos and go through all this stuff over a long period of time. But what's really cool too is the next step, once you've got those four note chords and you've added a fifth note, you can start adding more notes in your left hand and playing four note structures in your right hand to make really beautiful harmonies. So like, for example, if I were to improvise something like this, let's see, let's get this down so you see more of the keyboard. Okay, that looks good. Right, so that's five and six note chords. I was using some of those other structures. Yeah. Okay, so that's about an hour on this. A lot of information there, jam-packed. 
like I said, take the stuff, download the PDF, download the SMF, and just dedicate 20 minutes multiple times a week to sitting down at a keyboard and just methodically going through these things, practicing with a metronome, getting breaking stuff down so that you won't, if you can't play all 12 right away, maybe a, you can spend a day working on the first four chords, right? C, F, B flat, and E flat if you're just working on your major sevenths. Just, you know, and, and just go through them slowly. Break them down into like playing two or three in, in a row until you get them down. Then move forward. And just take these bite-sized chunks. Practice slowly, methodically, carefully, both hands, all 12 keys. And you can really, oh, there is one more thing. Oh, yes, there is. Yes. Ah, one more thing. <laughs> okay, let's go back to this. The other bit, too, which I just remembered now, is that you can have, I was doing all four notes in one hand, but you can have a distribution in your hands to be three notes and two notes in your left hand, right? So the way you, you could practice that is you would practice, another way to practice is to play three notes in your right hand, the top three notes, and the fourth note in your thumb. And then you can do progressions like I've got at the top of, of this page here. Thank you, Harry. Those are really good. Thank you, Mark. So this is... Right, so that's breaking it up with... And I'm just doing these shells in my left hand. And then the rest of the, tri the, the seventh chord is in my right hand. And for example, this one here, I've got... So you can really come up with some really great progressions. And, you know, eventually what you'll want to be able to do is to not just play them as block chords, but make them into music. But it comes from, and that's like a whole other thing about how to f create, take these chords and create music with it by filling in notes and, and making melodic patterns and stuff like that. But you got to start somewhere. And I've, as I've said in multiple videos, I'm seeing a lot of younger YouTubers that are making film scoring and all sorts of videos where they have their production skills really polished, but their harmonic language is rudimentary. And everything ends up sounding... You know, or or whatever. Just It's just the same chord progressions over and over again. With this, it's you could spend the rest... You hopefully will spend the rest of your life working on these and growing. I'm still working on stuff. I'm practicing some of those... Right this morning, I spent 20 minutes working on this particular voicing in all 12 keys, doing the same techniques I went over at the beginning of this. And I've been working on this for a couple of decades now. And so the material's out there. It's not going anywhere. As long as YouTube's around, this will be out here. You can download the PDF. I'm leave it up on my Dropbox. And I'm gonna. that's going to be sort of like a master folder there where I'm going to deposit the rest of these videos. So anyway, I hope that this has been helpful. If this is the future, you're watching this afterwards and you've made it this far, thank you so much. Leave any comments or questions below. You'd help the channel out by giving a thumbs up, by ringing that bell, by subscribing, and also by sharing. You know, I'm trying to build up this YouTube channel. It's moving forward slowly, but it is moving forward. It's still relatively small, but I do appreciate all of you regular guys and gals that are watching this. Uh, every week. Thank you so much. And next week, I think, is going to be pre-recorded and will be previewed 
on uh, it will be premiered at this time next week. Um, I won't be around uh, next Friday, but I will have something to go, and I might be able to watch along with you. So, all right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Try to enjoy a beautiful summer wherever you are, and stay safe. It's getting scary out there, my friends. You have a great day. I'll catch you on the next one.